Thank you. Turn to somebody and say, you really look good. You really look good. Thank you. I want to welcome our online group today. Uh, the thing about the online group is they can see us, but we can't see them. And I think that's a good thing. But we want you to come here if you can. If you live in the Lexington, Kentucky area, look up our River Church there. If you live in uh, Wa Waterford, Michigan, the Pontiac area, look up our campus there and look up our campus in western Indiana, in Kingman, Indiana, and worship with us there. And if you don't live anywhere near any of those and you live in the Lancaster area, we will make room for you. We will pull out some more chairs as we did today. And uh, so uh, I, I don't know. We're, we're outgrowing our building, but it's not the first time we've been up that mountain. Amen. God provided this one. He'll provide the next one in his timing, and I wouldn't care if that was tomorrow. I'm ready to build. They didn't scare me off the first time. I got a lot more left in me. Amen? Yeah, I'll mess with me. I'll build something next week. My tools are all sharp and ready. Are you ready, Brian? You, you look ready over there. I can tell. He's got my back. Amen. So, uh, welcome, and welcome, Tessa Lael. Don't you love that name? Come on up here, Matthew and Amy. These are precious people. Don't you love God's people? Amen. I'll introduce Matthew. This is Matthew. And this is Amy, Thomas, and this is Tessa Lael. So everybody say, welcome, Thomas family. Welcome, Thomas family. All right. So we welcome you guys officially. I know you're, you're trying to work out the pathways thing, and there's a lot going on, but God has open arms. Amen? And you're part of us, and however that all plays out, that's great. If you're here as a guest with them, would you please stand? Everybody that came that knows these guys and came to cheer on Tessa, how about that? Would you like your parents or anybody to join you? No? Okay. What, what do you want to do? Want to bring some people up here? If you want to come up here, come up here. Don't be shy. Get in the pictures. This is only going to happen once. Right? Amen? Thank you. Since you guys are not on I-70, I assume you're not in a hurry today. Come on, everybody's just, we got a big platform. I just say bring them on. Amen. The more the merrier. What's your name, young lady? Hi there. Welcome. We've got a whole crew, sorry. It's wonderful. Wonderful to have you. Thank you. I told them, I said, you guys know how to build a church. They're doing, growing the church. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? You like it up here? You can stay up here and help me preach if you want to, if you like it that much. <laughs> Amen. Well, so good to have all of you guys. I haven't met all of you personally, but I would love to, and hopefully we'll get to know you by name, first names here before too long. So I looked up the name Tessa. Do you know what it means? Harvester gatherer. Okay. I looked it up and found the Greek meaning. So uh, what intrigued me was Lael. 
of God, belonging to God. Is that what you got? How about that? I'm telling you. I love names, and that's a good name, isn't it? Amen. So they've requested a specific prayer reading over Tessalia today. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3. I don't know if you guys can do it. Look at there. And just <laughs> bam. In verse 5, I think we ought to just all read it together. Can you guys read that far back? I'm going to face this way because my eyes are better on that. <laughs> All together, would you read with us? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Somebody say amen. 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 He's, she's looking at me like, what are you doing? Is that your what are you doing look? Okay. Well, we're anointing you today and dedicating you to Jesus because Jesus loves you. Your mommy's going to let me hold you for a second. It's okay. She don't like it. But Jesus is blessing you. And as a symbol of our faith, we surrender her to the Lord and as a symbol and honor of you as her parents, God places you, places her in your hands, and he has entrusted you. The word we use in the Old English is the word steward. Steward. It comes from two original words, stig or sty and ward. Now, you guys know about a sty, right? You come from a pig family, is that right? Not a family of pigs, but I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying farmers, hog farmers. So that word steward comes from the word sty, and the word ward means keeper. So it's, it, the word means to keep that which belongs to someone else, to steward something. When God gives us things, especially the gift of a child, a life, he trusts us. God says, I trust you, man. I trust you with my most precious gift. And you're just keeping her for him until he gets a chance to move on her heart and she can turn her life over to him fully. Amen? So I bless you guys as her parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. I bless you to be Jesus to her, to always be the example of love to her, be the example of good living, of good choices, do the right thing in her presence because God is shaping her to become something great. She is of God and for God and belonging to God. You are the stewards of her life. Amen? Let's give God a praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Tessa Lael. Thank you, Jesus, for Tessa. Wow. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the giver of life. Amen? Now, on a lighter note, we get a lot of compliments on the river sign out front. And people say, who made that sign? And I say, yeah, I can't tell you. I was waiting till today to tell you. It was Amy. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Amen. Bless you. That's for you guys. That's your first Bible. She is so gorgeous. My goodness. See these people hugging down here? That's Ginger. 
And grandma, yeah. Oh, yeah. These are the Rufika people right here. And last week, we had an amazing weekend. And one of the things that happened, I wanted to highlight today especially, was Rufika's training, leadership training, graduation. Community Connections Leadership Academy, CCLA, graduated eight new leaders into this community. Powerful. Amen? And some of those leaders might be here today. I see one right there. Stand up, Dave. Anybody else here that graduated? If you're watching us online, we congratulate you. Congratulations, Dave. That is a, oh, Tre there she is. I knew there was more, Vicki. Yeah, there's a few more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, please keep Ginger and John and uh, Lois, Judy, in your prayers. And Shirley, keep, and Ron, keep them in your prayers. They, uh, Lois lost her mom this week. And she was, um, she lived through three or four centuries. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not really. But she was 98. Oh, yeah. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Come on. We're going to do it, Tim. We're going to see three digits. Come on. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for life and that more abundantly. What a great testimony. We called her Granny Ann. You know, uh, Granny Ann was, oh my goodness, all things to all people. She was so, such a blessing to know and to worship with and to see her serve. She's about that big and played the bass guitar professionally for a while. And uh, thank God for Granny Ann. Tom's back there laughing. He, he knew Granny Anna really well, didn't he? So uh, she is more alive than she's ever been. Amen. She moved from the land of the dying to the land of the living. In a moment. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for that. And we thank God for Rufika. And we thank God for our prison ministry. Last week we were in uh, SCI at our south campus with uh, the incarcerated members of the river, and the place was full. The worship was on fire. Paula and I got to learn new songs from our praise team there. Yes, sir. And I mean, they are tearing it up. Yes. They're growing. And today we welcome, for the first time to the river, Cody Hart. Stand up, Cody. <laughs> welcome to the river. <laughs> Woo! Amen. He is, he has a job. He's staying at our Rufika, uh, Terry Gordon house. And uh, God is just doing great things. Thank you, Mike Roth. Yeah. Amen. And Vicki yeah. and all the guys that volunteer in that ministry. We have like 30 volunteers. And during COVID, they put us down to five and then seven and this week, I think we had 10, but we didn't count because <laughs> I think they quit counting. But anyway, uh, God is moving. It's great. And we appreciate everybody and all your prayers for us in that endeavor. God is doing great things. Last week, I have to follow Lindsay's message from last week, y'all. I hope y'all were praying this week because that's going to be a tough one to follow. You know what I mean? She did a great job. I learned so much. But she, she hit on a word, uh, the word covenant. And God moved in, in some of our different ministries. I see the DD passing that along to our, our newcomers and things of that nature. And that word is huge in the revival that's happening. Holiness 
and covenant are two words you want to dig into. And so God is a God of covenant. He keeps his covenant with man. Amen? So I'm going to dig into it a little bit today and just build on Lindsay's firm foundation last week. She preached truth. If you didn't catch it, it's a, it's a good online service to watch. The worship last week came across real good. The, the music sounded amazing, and the message was so powerful. We watched it two or three times. Isaiah, if you could just bring me down just a little bit. I'm getting a teeny bit of feedback on my microphone. There you go. Isaiah does a great job. He's, he's a volunteer back there, and he does such a good job. Thank you, Isaiah. Amen. You know what the hard jobs are when nobody's volunteering to do it around the church, right? And that's the hard job. We were at a concert last night, and there was a guy running a mixer up here on the stage for the monitors. I told Paula, I said, the hardest working man in the building is that guy right there. He's got to run monitors for 15 or 20 different performers at a time. He's going to be busy. No, I, don't, I don't envy their position at all. So, everybody say covenant. Covenant. It's not a word you see a lot unless you're in, a, you know, in the business of, of law, but it's a powerful word. And it's a word that we're all, everybody in here is in a covenant. We're all in a covenant. You, you don't have to sign up to be in a covenant. Tessa Lael is in a covenant. She's already in a covenant. She came into life in covenant. One of the reasons we preach the sanctity of marriage before you become intimate is because life needs to begin in covenant. It's powerful. You're missing it. You're just missing it. If you don't understand, life needs to start in covenant because God is a God of covenant. He keeps his covenant and blessings. And Lindsay showed us last week so powerfully the reward of being in covenant with God. Amen? So let's just break it down a little bit. Okay, we've got some time now. I'm going to... I'm going to be with you here for a few minutes. Just relax and open your Bibles. Our first reading will be Ezekiel 37. The word covenant in the dictionary has different meanings for different groups and in different settings. It's not just a catch-all word, but I'll, I'll share with you what the Webster says. I always think it's good to just know these things. The word covenant is an agreement usually formal, between two or more persons to do or not do something specific. In law, it's an incidental clause in such an agreement. Ecclesiastical, or in the church, it's a solemn agreement between the members of a church to act together in harmony with the precepts of the gospel. That's big. And not every church has that harmony. Not every church has everyone acting in harmony, sharing the gospel. But that is the message. That's why we're here we're not here to entertain or be entertained. We're not here to build up a name or a buildings or whatever. We're here to act in harmony, sharing the gospel of God's love to planet Earth, to all who we see. And that's what we're doing. In the Bible, the con it is the conditional promises made to humanity by God as revealed in Scripture, the agreement between God and the ancient Israelites in which God promised to protect them if they kept his law and were faithful to him. This is the Webster's meaning. What we're going to unfold and unpack today mainly is this biblical part of covenant. 
God's covenant on Mount Sinai and God's covenant on Mount Zion. Everybody say, two mountains, two covenants. The first one, we learned as a little child, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day, keep it, thou shalt. And then we, we re- get real familiar with the thou shalt not from Mount Sinai, right? I heard an interesting story. There was a businessman who was pretty well known for his ruthlessness in business. And he once announced to Mark Twain that one of the things he wanted to do before he died was go to Mount Sinai and there stand and read the Ten Commandments out loud. To which Mark Twain replied, it'd be better if you just stayed in Boston and obeyed them. Mark Twain was always very quick with his wit. Ezekiel 37, 26 says, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Somebody say amen to the word of the Lord. Wow, now I have your attention. He wants to be with us. He wants to place us. He wants to multiply us. He wants to keep us. And it's not just for a season or a temporary part. It's forevermore. Forevermore. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Now, Ephesians 4 is a place I find in the new covenant. See, A lot of Christians need to realize that the New Covenant or the New Testament is Matthew through Revelation in your Bible, 27 books, but the first four primarily deal with things that happened in Jesus' life still in the Old Covenant. So if you really want to understand the New Covenant, you've got to get to Acts chapter 2 and forward, and a whole lot of things that are written in the letters to the churches, Romans and and going forward, that is where you'll find this new covenant being lived out. That's where you'll find this new covenant capsulized, all right? Ephesians 4 is one such place. We'll read from verse 1. Therefore, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, everybody say prisoner, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. It's a little hard to believe in your carnal mind, but that's the absolute fact. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this... He ascended, what does it mean that he first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Verse 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
Or you could say for the work of their ministry. A lot of people define ministry as what I'm doing up here with a sport coat on and fancy shoes. No! Ministry means to serve. I'm serving in this way today, but ministry is 24-7, 365. Amen? For their ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Look at somebody and say, that's really going to happen. I wish you could see it. I, I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing it. I, I, I'm realizing more and more and more. Christ in you, the hope of glory, yes, till we all come to the unity of the faith, the full measure. We're coming to the full measure of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, that's a big deal. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning and craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by that which every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body, edifying itself in love. The King James says, compacted. We're compacted together. A covenant can be termed a pact. And the pact that we are in, the new Testament, the new covenant pact, it's all him. It's made by him. It's, we're compacted together by him. You didn't choose. He did it. He, he, he told his disciples, he said, you've not chosen me. I chose you. I'm in charge of this thing. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, in these earthen vessels. He chose jars of clay, as one translator put it. Earthen vessels, this skin. He chose that to dwell in. Sometimes it aches. Sometimes it bleeds. Sometimes it don't want to do what needs to be done. But he chose these vessels. So remind your body every morning... This is a chosen vessel. So come on, knee. You're a chosen vessel. Come on, back. You're a chosen. Come on, lungs. Come on, spleen, pancreas, kidney, heart, feet, hands. Remind him. You're a chosen vessel. This jar of clay is glorious. Whew. We're being changed, becoming the body. That new covenant is capsulized here in a great way because it talks about by every joint. It's compacted. The joints are compacted. That Greek word is babazo or sum babizo. Different ways you can put that together. But it means to force together. I, when people say, I feel closer to my grow group than I do my biological family. I, I feel closer to my church family, friends, than I do long-time high school buddies that I've been close to for years. You know why? Because you're being pushed together. You've been for, by force. You're being compacted into a body where... The hand works alongside 
with the wrist and the arm and the shoulders and the head and the feet. It's all connected so every joint supplies. The life is in the joint. Not that kind of joint. Some of y'all went there. I know you're past. You know what I'm saying? It's under the blood. But that's why you need to be in a group. You need a relationship. You need to be accountable to somebody. You need to have somebody you can call when you wake up and your mind is out of sorts or you're not in the place where you ought to be spiritually, emotionally. You need a connection. You need a covenant. You need to be in relationship. You need a connection. You need a covenant. You need to be in relationship. I can say that all day long because I've watched, I've lived long enough, I know it to be true. The better you're connected, the more compacted you are, the, be- the stronger the joints, the greater the growth. This church is growing because there are relationships in this room that are covenant relationships. There are people in this room that would literally die for you. There are people in this room that would literally take a bullet for me. Absolutely. Not because I'm something, but because God has knit our hearts. He has joined us. And we lay down our lives. We, we love not our lives even unto the death. That's the covenant we're in. We overcame him by the blood of the lamb, word of our testimony, and love not their lives even unto the death. A lot of people leave that third part out. I've been guilty of that. But that's the, the covenant. It's all three. The blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony, and love not your life even to the death. Amen. It means to gather, to entrust, to knit together, to prove. How many of you ever had your relationships Proven. Tested, tried. You almost bailed. You, you, you were tempted to just not call back or not answer the text or not show up to church again. That's the temptation. God is proving the relationship to see whether or not you're going to be compacted. See whether or not the life flow is going to make it through there. And if you can get past yourself, if you can forgive, if you can lay down your own will and not have to be right all the time and let God be true. Amen. Love. Love each other. We're going to make it. So let's look at the covenant. Of course, there's, we're talking today about the new covenant between God and mankind. The New Testament is the new covenant written by God through his servants, most of whom walked with him and knew him in person. The covenant is real, it's powerful, and it's for us. It's not some old concept that's, oh, that was, that's so 60s, right? That's so last month. No, (laughs) this is now, here, every day, you and me, all the way, covenant. I want to share a few covenants just to give you a, a broader picture here. America has a covenant with God. America was founded by making covenant with God. Just a handful of folks were able to do a whole lot of stuff. A smaller army with less resources was able to defeat a greater army who had all the ships and the weapons and the people and the money. It's not an accident. They weren't just tougher than nails. You didn't beat nicotine by yourself. It was God. He made a covenant with you and he said, I got you. Give it to me. Let me have it. So America was founded. I know they're trying to, you know, mess with history, but basically history happened and you can't change it. Amen. I mean, it's pretty simple. You can adjust and rewrite and try to, you know, make it sound happy, but it wasn't all happy. It don't all fit your narrative. You don't, you can't change the history, change you. 
Let it change you. But America, by history, the fact was founded by God in a covenant with God. Are we perfect? No. It's a man-made government, for crying out loud. We're not exalting America to be God or an idol or above the Lord, above the Bible, none of that stuff. It's nonsense. Amen? God is God, but those in relationship with him. And if we get back to our relationship, back to our covenant with God, we'll make it as a people. Amen? That's the, that's the answer. Okay? I'm not making predictions. I'm just telling you. We have a covenant with God. We wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God. Because we've ticked off a whole lot of demons around the world. But we made a covenant with God at the very beginning to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world, and no nation has ever preached the gospel on every country around the globe like the United States of America. No nation has fed the poor in third world countries, shipped out more wheat, corn, and food, and vegetables, and tractors, and drilled wells than the United States of America ever in history, period, fact. Amen? Okay, enough of that. The covenant we have as individuals with America. You might hate America. That's fine. But you're living here in this country. You are in a covenant relationship with America. You have to abide by the laws of the land. Amen? Now, we in Ohio, we're a little rebellious. I mean, you know, it said 55, but you know. You know. Some states have to have a concealed carry permit. Ohio said, forget that. We don't need that. Right? Second Amendment's good enough. We're a little rebellious bunch, right? But we're in covenant with America. Amen? And we have to stay true to that covenant and exercise our rights as citizens to make this country the greatest it can be. Pray. And vote in that order. Be active in your community as much as you possibly can. And be at peace with all men. Amen? Then there's the covenant of marriage. Paula and I were married in 1982. And in 1982, I was uh, in a religious system that did not allow any jewelry. So... I was not, we did not have a ring ceremony. We didn't exchange rings when we exchanged vows. Now, our covenant was still the same. It was just as strong, just as powerful. We didn't need rings to prove our covenant. But I gave her an engagement watch. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to abide by the rules. Service merchandise? Walmart. Walmart. Okay. I tried. I gave her a Walmart watch. I think it was the most expensive one they had, though. It had a diamond in it. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all know dogs are a man's best friend? Diamonds are a girl's best friend? Guess who made that up? It wasn't men. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. They got us. I mean, they got us. You can, you can get dogs, you know, anywhere. They're free, right? I mean, there's probably a stray one in your neighborhood. They got us on that one. So we were married for about seven or eight years, and bing, I had that light bulb moment. I was praying. I remember I was actually cooking myself some lunch. Paula was out doing something else, I think. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and the Lord said, when I see the rainbow, I remember my covenant with mankind. Bing! Wait a minute. I thought that rainbow was to remind Noah, to remind us of God's covenant. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said, 
When I see the rainbow, I will remember. I was like, God, you don't forget. Who are you kidding? This can't be right. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, if God needs a reminder of covenant, how much more do you, Paul Bishop, stinking rotten flesh, forgetful, can't even find your car keys, how much more do you need a reminder of your covenant with your wife? And I went and bought rings. Hallelujah. I don't mean to brag, but I spent three-digit money. I'm, I'm just saying. Woo! Hey, it was 1990. What can I say? We have a covenant with the earth. Now, I know there's a lot of differing views on planet and blah, blah, blah. People, some people worship the planet. Well, make that your God, you know. But I worship the creator of the planet. Amen? And he made it, so I'm going to respect it, love it, be good, be kind to what he made for me to enjoy. Look at somebody say, be nice to the earth. We are in covenant with the earth. Everything you eat comes out of the ground. Amen? You are in covenant with your church. Covenant with your church. Many people don't know much about that covenant, so I urge you to press in to know more about your covenant with the body of Christ. Your covenant in particular with the local assembly that you attend. Because there's some level of covenant there even if you come once a month. Even if you never give a dime. There's some level of covenant there. Amen? So press into that. Get to know about your covenant. Read up. Look online and look, go back and visit our website from time to time. Go back and look at your old Pathways notes. And if you haven't been through Pathways, find a way to make that happen. Get with Betsy. Way, hey, Betsy. And find a way to get that material, that information. We'll make a way. We'll find a way. If you want to be in covenant with this church, we want to know that. And you need to know that. Amen? What a beautiful thing to have brothers and sisters pray for you. I got a text this morning. Marilyn Henderson needs prayer. Now, all of you can pray for Marilyn Henderson. She's been sick all weekend. I love when people make a connection and say, I've got a church. I'm sick. I'm going to do what the Bible said. Call for the elders of the church. Amen? And we're believing for her healing today. She's watching online. Marilyn, rise up and be healed in Jesus' name. There's an anointing. Amen? Wow. Wow. We, just last, uh, two weeks ago, we preached there's a lamb for that. Amen? Wow. Yes. If you're sick, there's a lamb for that. Hallelujah. And then... There's the covenant we have with each other. But for the rest of this time we have here this morning, I want to share with you this new covenant. Hebrews chapter 12 says it in words that I cannot match, wouldn't try to, wouldn't even attempt to match. Hebrews 12, 21. Did you get my add on? Oh, no, I added, added on to my message. They, they are uh, counting on me to have it ready by Friday morning, but sometimes the Holy Ghost hits me late. So open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 12. I'll read it for you. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake, but, everybody say but, but, but ye are come to Mount, Z Mount Sion or Mount Zion, 
and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of blood that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse him not that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. There's a shaking. But the shaking is not just to get rid of stuff. The shaking is for that which remains so that it might remain. Amen. If you're going through a shaking right now, hang on to your covenant. Hang on to what you know. Keep on speaking the words of life over your being, your family, your relationships, and watch God shake the stuff off. And you go, oh, I can't live without that. And God says, yes, you can. Watch me expose and give you what cannot be shaken. So when it's all done, when the storm passes over, you know where you stand. You know who your real friends are. You know who's got your back. And you trust God more than you ever did. Because that which remains can remain and will remain. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, <laughs> whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let it burn. Let it fall. Anything that's not like you, God, take it away from me. Two mountains, two covenants here in Hebrews chapter 12. He makes it abundantly clear that we come to this mountain, not Mount Sinai. Right. <laughs> but by grace, we come to Mount Zion, to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That old one was done away, but this new one will never be done away. Amen. I said never will be Done away. But ye are come to this mountain. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. This covenant can be summed up in a few simple words. By grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can keep on trying. To make it works, you can keep on trying to put it in a package you can fix, put in a formula that you can work, create the game and make the rules how you want to make them. And every time man does that, God just comes along and goes, whoops. Well, you tried. But by grace. You're not as thankful for that as I am. Oh, man. Grace. I say stuff sometimes and I walk away and think, my God, what an idiot. I can't believe you said that. Grace, Lord, grace. Give me grace. I need your grace. Am I the only one here that needs grace? Give me grace, Lord. Give me grace. 
So what is this new covenant? Jesus explained it when he said, Luke 22 and 20, after the supper, he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. In agree- an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out for you as a sacrifice. This covenant hinges on one thing and one thing only. Not your works, not your good looks, not your money, not how fast you can run or how faithful you can be to a commitment to, a, to anything. It hangs on one thing, one thing only, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It will not change. It will not bend. It will not break. It is powerful. It will always be powerful. There is power in the blood. This cup Jesus shared with them was was to remember him. Numbers 10 and 9, when you arrive in your own land and go to your war against your enemies who attack you and sound the alarm with trumpets, the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness too, sounding them at your annual feast and beginning of each month. And blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpet will remind you, remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. Now, pay close attention. We're just going to go a few more minutes, but we've got to do this. This is what, this is what you, you came to hear today. Are you ready? Are you with me? In the Noahic covenant, God said, I will remember my covenant. In Numbers, the word says, and God remembers. Are you ready for this? On the cross... When Jesus was being crucified, there was a thief on either side. One railed against him. The other thief is the one I want you to hear about today. The other thief looks at Jesus and says, Lord, would you remember me? Jesus could have said to him, yes, I will remember you, but pay close attention. Jesus did not say, I will remember you. He said, this day. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what's going on out there, but up here, I see in this verse, in this place, in this passage, in this time, in this moment in history where God moves from a remembered covenant to a now covenant. You search your New Testament, your new covenant, and you show me where God remembered in the New Testament. I don't see it anywhere else. He said, remember me, and the Lord said, I got one better. (laughs) Noah, I will remember. Israel, I will remember. But he looks at us and says, Today. Today. His mercies are new every morning. He don't have to remember because he's the mediator of the new covenant. Look at your Bible, the New Testament. Do a word search. The word remember from the book of Acts forward, the new covenant, part of the New Testament, The word remember is in there 50 or 60 times and never attributed to God except in Revelation when he remembers the sin of Babylon and pours out his wrath. But everywhere else, the word remember says, Greg, remember. 
Paul, remember. Andrew, remember. Frida, remember. It's telling us to remember. We got to remember our covenant with him. But he's never had to be reminded ever again because he says this day, my covenant with you, it's sealed, it's eternal, it's everlasting, forevermore. You are part of an unshakable kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 So what do we do, Pastor? Build a strong covenant relationship through spending or investing time into people. There's no substitute. A text message, don't quite cut it. Watching online is awesome when you can't be here, but it's not the same. You know what you told me, Brian? It's not the same as people face to face. Oh, it's handy. It's good. It's convenient. It helps. Thank God for technology. But we need each other. We need to sit down over coffee. We need to meet face to face. We need to talk on the phone. We need to ride down the road together. We need to fish and hunt and play and act like humans again. Instead of building a 40-foot deck on the back of your house, build a front porch and tell the neighbors, hey, there's some iced tea over here. Come on down. Amen? That's what happened in our culture. We quit building front porches. How many houses you know got a big front porch? Not very many. I got one, yeah. I did it on purpose. And my neighbors come here too. Sometimes I wish they wouldn't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, y'all. Hey, come on over. No, just kidding. Amen. Build a big front porch. Invest time in each other. Because we're in the age, the era, the covenant, the revival of presence. Everybody say presence. Presence. This day. This day. I'm going to be with you. And a little baby shall be born. Call his name Emmanuel. God with us now. Not someday. Is that me doing all that popping and carrying on? I'm sorry. I'm just a little fired up. But God is present with his people. He couldn't wait to get to you. He couldn't wait to be born of Mary. He, he was in a hurry. He was ready. He's waiting. Saying, come. Come. This day. This day. Salvation can take just a moment now. They used to have to wait a whole year at times to feel any kind of absolution for sin you can feel it receive it know it today now in a moment right here right here right here over there stand with me if you will Woo. thank you Jesus Hebrews 13 and verse 20 now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is my prayer over you. May the God of peace, the shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of covenant, make you perfect in every good work. 
working in you what is well-pleasing. This is my prayer over you today. Now I want you to pray with your eyes open. And I'm going to read it and have you repeat it. If you will, by faith, repeat after me. John Wesley's prayer. Many of you may know it. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you. Or laid aside for you. Exalted for you. Or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and to your disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made in the earth, let it be ratified in the heavens. Everybody shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Yes, sir. God is fighting for us. God God is on our our side. He He is going to come. Yes, he He will overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Jesus is here. Carrying our burdens. Covering our